you want to become a solutions architect at AWS. In today's video, you are going to go over some things that you need to learn for that. But more importantly, you are going to go over some of the things that you do not need. Sometimes you put so much time, energy and effort into learning things that are absolutely not needed. So let's start with that one. One thing that you do not need to be a solutions architect at AWS is hands-on coding. There is a big difference between a solutions architect working at AWS versus a AWS solutions architect working at a different company. I have been a solutions architect at AWS for the last four and a half years. Before that, I was a AWS solutions architect working at Verizon. During my time in Verizon as a solutions architect, I was working with couple projects and I was doing hands-on coding. I was doing Jenkins file, infrastructure as code with CloudFormation, Python as in Python DevOps scripting, as well as Python backend API coding, machine learning analytics coding with Python, etc. However, Solutions Architect at AWS are actually not allowed to code for their customer. You will not be changing customer code base. There is a separate group for that. We call them professional services. Also, you will never have a coding round in your interview. And it is absolutely fine that you join AWS then you learn coding as a solutions architect. Does it help if you know how to code? Yes, it will help you do proof of concepts, workshops, code snippet in the blog, etc. But it is not in the main functionality. And like I said, I have seen a lot of people who join as a solutions architect at AWS and then learn coding if they are interested. I have also seen many solutions architects at AWS who does not know how to do traditional coding. Now, the second thing you do not need is a STEM degree or a engineering college degree. I'll give an example. My mentor and one of the best solutions architect at AWS I have worked with, Simon Rice, he was the solutions architect of the year at AWS. And that is very, very difficult to get. He does not have an engineering degree. If you look at LinkedIn, for solutions architect at AWS, and in some cases, some leaders as well, a lot of them do not have engineering college background. If you look at the job qualifications, it would say we require engineering or an equivalent degree. So if you have a BCA or a bachelor's in science degree, in some cases, even commerce, you are totally fine. If you are a fresher, then you need to show a little bit extra. Of course, if you don't have engineering college degree, but you are working in IT, whether in mainframe, Java, QA, or whatever it may be, then you have a little bit of an advantage. For freshers, you need a couple extra things, which I'm going to cover in a little bit. All right, now let's talk about the things you absolutely need. For the interview, you need to map your work experience to the Amazon leadership principles. It's okay if you are using the same example in multiple leadership principles because it is impossible to have unique stories for all different leadership principles. And in case of a major project that might hit different leadership principles. In those principles, one thing which is very, very important for solutions architect is learn and be curious. Technology is moving very fast today. Few years back, if you just learned, let's say Java or mainframe, you just learn it one time and then you are set for many years. Today, that is not true. Five years back, if you learned EC2, then you are fine. Then came Lambda, now Kubernetes. Now the DevOps is being evolved into platform engineering. So somehow you have to demonstrate that you can learn new technology and keep up with it. How do you do that? So this ties back to the previous point about freshers. Even if you are not working at a cloud project, you need to learn that as a side project and do some small proof of concepts. So separate video on 
what proof of concepts you need to do. Save those proof of concepts in GitHub and make sure during the interview you demonstrate that, hey, Mr. Interviewer, look, I have been working in a non-AWS project and because of that, I have deep knowledge in, let's say, database or API or etc. In addition to that, I have also studied AWS, got this certification and did this project and you can see that in my GitHub. The next thing is also a big difference between a solutions architect at AWS versus a AWS solutions architect at a different company. Communication and presentation. When I was in Verizon, I was mostly working with one or two big projects and uh, I was diving deep, I will help them code, I was uh, integrated at every decision, we were chatting every day. Uh, that's how I built trust with them. So I didn't need to go and present in like a fancy PowerPoint or anything. Now, if you look at the number of customers that are using AWS and then the number of big projects that are using AWS versus the number of solutions architect working at AWS, there are only few solutions architect at AWS supporting a huge number of projects, use cases, and customers. So obviously, and we talked about it, you cannot help them code or fix bugs as a solutions architect. So how do you communicate the ideas and how do you want trust? You do that by being succinct, polished, and by conveying complex system design ideas in easy to understand language. As a solutions architect at AWS, you will be doing presentations a lot, either with different projects, different customer, as well as on the stage. So this is something that you need to be good at and you will be tested on this on your interview. And a solutions architect at AWS wears many hats, as in you will be working with tech leads and architects from the customer. At the same time, you will also be chatting with CIOs and CTOs to know their business priority. So you have to know how to communicate with these C-level executives. Now the next hard skill that any solutions architect uses every day is system design. Now there's a difference between system design for the interview versus system design in day-to-day -day work. I'll give an example. In a interview, you might get asked like, hey, Mr. Candidate, can you do a system design for, let's say, WhatsApp or YouTube or like a ticket buying system? So those are like big system designs that interviewer is trying to see if you know the concepts. But once you get in AWS, you need to study and dive deep. Uh, so I'll give an example. Uh, a customer asked me, Raj, uh, my Kubernetes cluster is generating a lot of logs. Can you give me an efficient logging architecture? And I said, yes, sure. Use FluentBit, which is more lightweight. FluentBit should put the logs in a streaming architecture like Kinesis, and then the logging system can consume it. It is highly possible that the logging system cannot keep up with the logs that your application is producing. Putting this streaming architecture in between will help the logging system consume the logs at a rate that they could keep at. Another example could be, hey Raj, I want to host multiple microservices in my Kubernetes cluster, but I don't want to pay a lot for different load balancers. How do I do that? So you could say, you could implement an ingress system design using a single application load balancer. You can use AWS load balancer controller, or you could use third party ingress controller such as Nginx. The good news is, as long as you know how to demonstrate, learn, and be curious, based on your customer's project, you can learn those. And as you work with more customers, some common patterns will evolve. Did the things I mentioned surprise you? Do you think I missed something major that you think is very, very critical? Let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. All right, folks. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.